Hello and welcome back to the 14th episode of my online course on special relativity. My name is Andrzej Dragan. I'm a professor of theoretical physics at University of Warsaw and National University of Singapore. And today we go back to the problem that I called the hardest problem in special relativity. In fact, we have failed to solve it so far. And we will solve it today. And we will do it smart, so that instead of spending hours on painful calculations, we will solve it in just a single line. But before we do, we have to develop some useful technical tools. So far we discussed what happens to description of space-time events by means of their coordinates when observed from a moving frame of reference. And we have introduced something that could be called a four position, which essentially refers to the fact that in order to characterize an event, you have to specify its time and position. And these coordinates transform to a new frame of reference according to the Lorentz transformation. But they are not the only quantities that change in moving frame of reference. Just take velocity or momentum or energy. They all change when the observer starts to move. And for that reason, let us introduce a more general quantity called a four vector, which essentially is a collection of four components that transform to a new frame of reference according to the Lorentz transformation. In the special case of observers moving along the x direction, that boils down to the following simple set of equations, characterizing how individual components of a four vector transform to a new frame. And we can also write these expressions for a more general case when velocity is an arbitrary vector v. One comment. A four vector is not just an arbitrary collection of four numbers, because what makes a four vector is not a number of components, but their transformation properties. So that when you change the frame of reference, when you start to move, components of four vectors have to undergo Lorentz transformation. They have to change in a certain way. And it's the same with regular vectors. Because when you take a vector and rotate it, its components have to change. So a random collection of three numbers is not a vector. Your date of birth is three numbers, the year, the month, and the day. But these three numbers do not give rise to a vector. Because when you rotate, your date of birth stays the same. And it's the same with four vectors. So let's check out some examples. Consider a frame of reference with a fly resting in it, in which there is also a four vector that has the following very simple components, C000. We will now jump to a new frame of reference in which the fly is flying with velocity v, which means we have to carry out a Lorentz transformation for velocity minus v. And in that new frame of reference, the components of a four vector change according to a prescription given above. And that leads us to a new form of the four vector in that moving frame of reference. In this frame of reference, the four vector is characterized by fly's velocity v. And for that reason, we call that four vector a four velocity. If we change the frame of reference again, then the fly's velocity is going to transform from v to some v prime. And we can either transform the whole vector by just applying Lorentz transformation, or we could just replace velocity v with v prime. And the result is going to be the same. For velocity is a relativistic generalization of three-dimensional velocity that we are familiar with. And soon we'll discuss physical interpretation of all its components. And we will also realize that most of physically relevant quantities, such as energy or momentum, must be components of some four vectors. But before we get there, let us discuss some geometrical properties of these funny four-dimensional objects. Let's check out some of the properties of four vectors. First of all, a square of the temporal component of a four vector minus the square of the spatial component of a four vector does not change under Lorentz transformation. Therefore, if you write the analogous expression for the primed version of the four vector, the result is going to be the same. And this allows us to define the following expression and call it a square of a four vector, which is a direct generalization of this concept from the three-dimensional vector calculus. Let us now take an arbitrary four vector, a0 and a, and multiply it by some constant alpha. <laughs> 
and what we obtain is still a 4 vector. So let's take another one, call it b0 and b, and also multiply it by some constant beta. And now, if you take a linear combination of those two, what we obtain is still a 4 vector. And this is because the Lorentz transformation that defines 4 vectors is linear. And therefore, a linear combination of 4 vectors will remain a 4 vector. Let us now take the resulting 4 vector and plug it into the expression above. And after some simplifications, we will arrive at another useful property of 4 vectors. A combination A0 times B0 minus a scalar product between a vector and b vector is frame independent, which means that you'll get exactly the same expression for the primed reference frame. And this allows us to call this expression a product of two four vectors a and b. And that product does not depend on the choice of the inertial observer. These basic properties are quite known in relativity, but now I would like to surprise you with quite unknown property that will turn out to be extremely useful in solving the problem that I discussed in the episode 10, and I called that problem the hardest problem in special relativity. That new property is a consequence of Lorentz transformations defined before, and to formulate it, let us consider the following combination of the components of a four vector taken in two frames of reference. So let's consider a vector minus a prime vector divided by a zero plus a0 prime. After plugging in the expressions for the primed components defined in the previous formulas and some simplifications, we find that the final result only depends on the relative velocity between the frames and does not depend on the choice of the four vector. So let's go back to this simple looking problem from episode 10 and finally try to solve it. In that problem, you had two inertial observers, A and B, and these observers were watching the same witch that in the frame A was moving with velocity V, while in the frame B was moving with velocity V prime. And our goal was to find the relative velocity between B and A, let's call it capital V. The major difficulty lied in the fact that the three inertial observers defined in this problem are affected by the thomas Wigner rotation discovered by Zilberstein, and that made the whole problem really, really difficult. And so far we have failed to solve this trivially looking problem. But now, equipped with new tools, the solution will take only one line. All you have to do is to take the previously defined notion of the four velocity and plug it into the magical rule defined in the yellow frame. The right-hand side is only the function of the relative velocity and the left-hand side of the equation, as expected, is an anti-symmetric function of v and v prime. And practically we can leave the solution like this, because the right-hand side is just a rescaled relative velocity in the frames. We can also take the square of both sides of the equation and compute capital V squared, plug it back, and obtain the final expression for capital V vector. So we have finally solved this nasty looking problem that normally takes many pages of painful calculations. And the whole difficulty lies in the fact that it involves the Thomas Wigner rotations discussed in episode 10. And today we did not have to bother about any of this because our four vector formalism takes care of all that automatically. I discuss all of this in more detail in my textbook on relativity that is called Unusually Special Relativity. So check out the link in the description. And we are done for today. The next time I'm going to talk about the famous relation between energy and mass e equals mc squared. And until then, take care of yourselves and